Hey, what's up guys? Glock9 here and welcome to a new 7 Days to Die series. This one is Horde Every Night, Ramblin' Man. We're playing on a random gen world. The seed for that world is 80085. I know it says boobs, but I found it online and it sounds really cool, so we're gonna check it out. Difficulty settings is Warrior. Uh, Blood Moon frequency every single night, of course. Uh, maxed out 64 enemy Blood Moon count as always. Mark airdrops on. Everything else is default, so let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, we're spawning in in the grasslands, which is great. Definitely the easiest biome to get started in. Gonna have a quick look around. Got a giant hotel right there. That looks like the Ostrich Hotel. And let's just get through these initial challenges as quick as we can so we can get our four skill points and see where the trader is located, and then we'll go from there. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Ramblin' Man, basically... It means we have to use a different POI or base every single night. And now, with a horde every single night, things are going to get interesting. The first few nights are not going to be so bad. Not much fortification has to happen. But as the hordes progressively get larger and more difficult, shit's going to get crazy because we only have a day to prepare and fortify, not to mention get the ammo we're going to need to fight the horde. Now, we can use traders still, but traders restock every three days. So if we buy all the ammo from a trader and then use it that night for the horde, we're fucked for the next two days. We have to either go find more ammo or craft it. And now speaking of crafting, we can craft a workbench, a forge, uh, a mixer, a chem station, all of those things if we want to. But I think we're better off trying to find them in the world and then just marking them on the map instead of trying to get the supplies we, we're going to need to craft them. Uh, this, this challenge right here, it wants us to make the pants and the shirt, but I'm also going to make the gloves, the hood, and the shoes. Um, <clears throat> because another thing with Ramblin' Man is no storage. Okay, the only storage we can use in this playthrough is our backpack and a vehicle. So the quicker we can get a bicycle crafted or a mini bike, the better off we're going to be. Okay, let's get the campfire crafted. We can move our water, food, and torch up to our inventory. We can get rid of the land claim block and this letter. Let's put on our hood, shoes, and gloves. Bring down our club and our bow. And also the campfire so we can put that thing down. And just like that, we're done with these initial challenges. And we have our four skill points. So I'm going to put one into Javelin Master. And then I'm going to put one into Strength, and that will allow us to put two into Pack Mule. Because remember, no storage, so the quicker we can open up slots in our backpack, the better. Might as well plant this seed, right? Sustain a little bit of life, and before I forget, let's craft a spear. We can craft level two spears now because we put a point into Javelin Master. And where is this trader? Literally right here. How sweet is that shit? That's going to help a lot. Let's make our way over there, and we'll grab any feathers we can find along the way. Oh, that's uh, too close to the trader to break up. Let's check this trash right here. Nails and lead. Probably scrap those nails for the iron. In the beginning, we can take everything, but then we have to really start getting strict in terms of what we're going to hold on to and what we're going to get rid of. So we got a working chem station, a destroyed workbench, ooh, a bunch of forged iron, take that. A destroyed mixer, oh, with a mixer schematic inside. Read that, that could come in handy. Uh, a campfire with no tools in it, and a working forge. So that's good, we got a forge and a chem station. Let's go talk to this guy. See what his jobs are. For a while. What jobs do you have? Shit, well... Buried Supplies is the closest one. Not the job I wanted, but... It's the job I'm gonna take. I guess this kind of makes us friends Just south of us. Okay. Hey, can I search your bookcase? I can. Um, alright, I'm gonna take the barbed wire schematic. And I'm gonna sell that right back to him. Because that's something I'm never gonna use. And I can get 160 coin for it. So we're going to do that. 
Selling things and buying things from the trader on top of inventory management is key to Ramblin' Man. So anything we don't see ourselves using in the future, we need to sell and get rid of. Uh, for the coin, obviously. So we can use that to buy not only ammo, but anything else we might need to craft things we're going to need to craft. The lead, I'm going to go ahead and just throw in the forge for now. Get that smelting down. No reason to hold on to it. And uh, let's mark the trader on the map. And we'll just call it Trader Forge. So we know there's a forge here. And let's go get that buried supplies and see what we got in there. And I hear a zombie, so let's get our first kill. I'll take those plastic parts, but I'm going to end up selling those to the trader. Because in the beginning here, when we don't have much storage, things like plastic parts, electrical, mechanical parts, duct tape, leather, things that we would normally hoard and just stick in storage and hold them for when we need them, we need to just sell that shit to the trader, get it out of our inventory, and get the coin for it right away. And then when we need them, for instance, we're going to need duct tape and leather for the bicycle handlebars, then we'll need to go find that shit at that time. And I know it sucks, but that's just the way we have to play it, at least until we can craft a vehicle and we have a bit more storage. <laughs> Is this bird going to attack us or what? Let's make as many more arrows as we can. I could use the feathers, but I don't really feel like fighting this bird either. Let's just keep moving towards the uh, buried supplies. Now, technically, this is my third season of Horde Every Night. We did just the standard Horde Every Night series that lasted 19 days. And then we did Ghost Town that lasted 21 days. So that's my, my goal is to at least beat our current record of Horde Every Night, which is 21 days. So if we can make it to day 22 even, I'll be satisfied. Damn, are these buried supplies going to be amongst this crazy terrain right here? How the hell are we going to dig this shit up? Where could it be? Down here or up here? There's zombies around too. Fuck, man. Oh, he's walking away. All right, well, let's try, and hopefully we won't be out here all day. I'm going to start down here, because I'm assuming it's going to be closer to, like, ground level. Oh, you're kidding me, dude. How fucking sweet is that? Oh, hey there, cornmeal. See you later. Fuck out of here. All right, sweet. I'm going to keep the food and water. Oh shit, did that spawn in a bunch of zombies? I think it did. And I don't really feel like fighting them on this crazy terrain. Let's just start moving towards the trader. Yeah, I'm going to keep the food and water, obviously, but I think I'm going to sell that recipe and that elixir. It's the learn-in elixir, so it gives us like a 20% XP boost for a short amount of time. Which, you know, it's all good, but I would rather the coin at this point. Oh, got a jar of honey there. That's nice. Now, honey is something I usually hoard for an infection, but we're going to take it because it's also a source of food and it gives you a stamina boost. So we'll just hold on to it and eat it when we need to. Not necessarily wait for an infection. We don't have the luxury of doing that. Food and water is going to be a bitch in this playthrough because in Alpha 18, dysentery and food poisoning are much more prominent. Let Let's see what we got for this shit. Uh, a level one yourself. iron spear or three first aid kits. I think I'm going to go for the first aid kits. Plus we got uh, 2,500 XP and 560 coin. So that's good. Oh, this isn't the learning elixir. It's the awesome sauce. It gives us a 20% bartering boost for three minutes. But I'm just going to go ahead and sell it for the 100 coin. And I'm also going to sell this recipe. And I think that's it. Now we can sell these plastic parts. And get rid of those plant fibers. We have one cloth. We should probably get Thanks more cloth. Here. We can do that Get by getting here. cotton and then crafting cloth out of the cotton so we can craft some bandages just in case. But let's start heading into town. We need more wood, more stone, more feathers for arrows. 
and we need to find a spot that we're going to hold down tonight. All right, we'll take that cotton and make cloth out of it. It's one to one, so we can make 13 pieces of cloth. And when that's done, we'll make a stack of bandages. This way, if we wind up bleeding out or whatever, we don't have to waste our first aid bandage. I'll take that trophy. In its current state, we can sell it to the trader, or we can always scrap it for the lead and throw the lead in the forge. Hey, you know what? This place right here should be fine for the night one horde. I mean, we could handle the night one horde on foot. Honestly, we're only going to get like two, maybe three zombies at the most, but we got to use a POI. And this little one right here will be perfect because we don't want to go too crazy, right? We don't want to use a good POI that would work well for a larger horde on night one because, like I said earlier, we can only use it one time and then it's done. We got a bird right here. Take it down before it notices we're even here. Yeah, fuck you, bird. Let's see if we can get up there, harvest that bird, and see if there's anything else on the roof. I mean, this actually, this POI probably wouldn't do bad against a larger horde. It is made of iron, and it'd be easily upgradable, but whatever. This is the one. I'm sure there are plenty of other POIs in this town. It looks like the town stretches out into the grasslands, but also into the desert as well. I'm going to stick in the grasslands for now, though. Until we can either find some good desert clothes, or we run through all of the POIs in this area. We have a backpack up here, but that's it. I'll grab the aloe. No need for the dye. Oh, we got a wolf right there. And it sounds like we have a zombie approaching. Yeah, we got Moe down there, and I'm sure there's at least one zombie inside this place. Let's, uh, let's make some frames. We'll just do five of them for now. Uh, let's actually cancel all this stuff. And then we can recraft the bone knife and the arrows. Bring the frames down and we'll put like two right here and another one right there. And maybe one right here. This way, if that wolf notices us and comes running, we can get up on the rooftop pretty quickly. Come here, mouth. Take all that stuff. The axe we can dump or scrap for the stone. A sleeper right there. Let's close that door. Uh, the springs and the oil we can sell. It's going to pain me to sell the oil, but probably best we do that. Get a decent amount of money for it. Because it's not like we can make Molotovs anytime soon. Uh, chill, dude. I'm not seeing the wolf. I'm sure it's still out there, though, so we just need to be careful. I want to get the stone from these pallets, though. You know what? It's probably better if I do it from up here. Just in case that thing does try and sneak up on us. Uh, the doorknob we can sell or scrap for the brass. I'm not going to take the bones. The oil we can sell. I'm not going to take the paper. We can uh, break up this pet carrier for the plastic parts. Close this door. Uh, we don't need leather, but leather sells, so we'll grab it. Every coin counts in Ramblin' Man. Oh, I'll take both of those things. What is this? Working man or woman can never have enough pockets. Sweet. We know how to craft a pocket mod now. Take 5% less damage when wearing a suit. Well, I'm never going to wear a suit, so I'm going to hold on to that book and we'll sell it at the trader. Let's finish looting this place and then we'll probably make a quick trip back to the trader to unload some of this shit out of our inventory for a coin. And then we'll get back here and there's not much fortifying that we're going to do. I think all we're going to do is put a frame in the doorway and that's it. And we'll probably be fine just upgrading that thing with wood. But if we want to be safe, we can use the clay soil and stone to make some cobblestone and upgrade that frame uh, twice with wood and then once with the cobblestone. And we'll be more than safe inside here. 
And when they come to the door, we can just use the spear. We don't even have to use any arrows tonight. Because the other option would be get up on the rooftop. But then the zombies may position themselves in a way that we can't get a shot at them. And, uh, you know, then we're just stuck on the rooftop all night. So that's the plan as of now. I'm going to go ahead and make uh, these bandages. Make as many as we can. Scrap the plants. We'll put on the bandana. And uh, let's continue on here. Acid in a cooking pot. The cooking pot is great. We're going to need one of those. We've got a weapons bag right here. Nothing too great, but I'll take all that shit. We can put the Gravedigger's mod on our shovel. And uh, probably end up selling the stun baton. And maybe the knife too. I don't know. Now there is other stuff in here that I could harvest, but I'll worry about that tonight. Because the horde is not going to last long. Like I said, we'll get maybe two or three zombies tonight at the most. Let's go ahead and make a trek back to the trader. Unload all of the stuff that we can. And maybe pick up another job. I don't know. We can always do that tomorrow. We're definitely going to go see him again tomorrow. And maybe by then his jobs will reset. Because I believe all the other jobs he had were pretty far away. Let's go get this zombie. I'm trying to kill everyone I see for the experience because we want to level up as quick as possible here in the beginning so we can get the skill points that we need to unlock all the shit we need to unlock. Bam, speaking of which, we just leveled up. I'm going to put this skill point into uh, intellect because doing this will unlock Grease Monkey. And now the next time we level up, we can unlock the bicycle. Ah, the steel knuckle schematic. I'm never going to use those, so, uh, ooh, what do we have here? Scrap gloves. Let's put those on. Get rid of these, uh, grass fiber gloves. But yeah, I'm never going to use the steel knuckles. So we'll hold on to it and we'll sell it at the trader for 160 coin. Let's go ahead and make a bit of cobblestone for tonight. That we can use to upgrade the frame we're going to put in the doorway of the mobile home. And we got some time to kill. So we can kind of just explore the surrounding area a bit. We can chop down a whole bunch of trees. You know, get a, get ahead of all of the wood we're going to need. Same thing for stone. I forgot there was a wolf in this area earlier. So we need to just be careful. That thing might still be around. Ooh, that's not bad. I'll sell the wire tool and the springs, but definitely hold on to those repair kits. Those will come in handy. Well, we are encumbered, but what the hell. We might as well check out this house. We got some time to kill still. It's not a dungeon style, so there's not going to be a lot of loot anyway, and probably not a lot of zombies either. Ooh, that's a wolf. There it is. Okay, let's get inside, grab this chair, close the door. There's probably so much shit in our inventory we don't need. Like the nitrate powder, the grass fibers, the sand, the pine tree seeds, but I'll go through all of that stuff tonight. Unless I find some good shit in here that uh, we need to fit into our inventory. But yeah, I'm not too worried about it. Because even if we are encumbered... Tonight, during the horde, it's not going to be a big deal because we're basically just going to be standing in front of a frame, stabbing the zombies that come to the doorway. Uh, goldenrod seed recipe. We get 160 coin for that, so we're going to sell it. Now, in a normal playthrough, I would definitely read that because it would be great to be able to uh, make seeds out of goldenrod flowers and plant that shit all over your base. Uh, so you have, like, endless amounts of goldenrod tea or whatever, but since we're going to be constantly on the move in this playthrough, doesn't really make sense. We can always pick this shit up as we need it. That's pretty much the essence of Ramblin' Man, like I was saying earlier, is that you hold on to the necessities to survive, and then everything else that you need, you just kind of have to get as you need it. 
or find it as you need it, or buy it from the trader. Ooh, a cigar. What does that replace? Our bandana? Check that out in a second. All right, I don't need any of that stuff. Yeah, it replaces our bandana, and it gives us one point in strength and better bartering. So yeah, fuck that bandana. We'll keep the cigar in our mouth. All right, we're done here. I don't see that wolf. Let's just head for the mobile home. We still have a little bit of time. We can spend that chopping down trees and getting more stone. Alright, that's pretty much it. We can throw the torch up on the wall for light. And now we just wait. And we can spend the time waiting for the horde, harvesting some of the resources in here. Wood, iron. We can harvest the blinds in the window for plastic parts. Alright, here we go. Horde number one. I can hear some zombies running out there. Oh, they better come to the door. Not that it's a big deal if they start beating on the side of the building. But, I thought I'd get a couple of easy kills here. This way, morons. I mean, we got this one right here beating on the uh, front porch. So we can take her out this way. I didn't want to use any arrows tonight. But I guess I will. Here's the second one right there. Is this it? Just these two? Uh, no, here's a third one. Oh shit! You sneaky little bastard. I didn't. I was trying not to take any damage today, and this guy ruined it for me. But here we go. We got all three of them in the doorway now. And just like that, horde number one is over, and so is day number one. And I think we're off to a pretty good start. We could spend the rest of the time tonight, you know, gathering a little bit more resources from the shit that we can take apart inside this building. I need to go through my inventory. Um, there's some stuff we can dump. But I think tomorrow morning we're going to make a run to the trader real quick. And uh, sell some of this stuff. The brass, I don't know if I want to sell it or uh, scrap it and put it in the forge. We're gonna have to break this block to get out of here, or we could we could break this block here. Let's do that, and then we can put a frame, a wooden frame, in its place in case any more zombies show up. But this way, in the morning, we can get out of here relatively quickly. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this episode, you guys. I'm gonna wait out the rest of the night in here, and we'll pick this thing up on the morning of day two. I wanna make a quick trader run, and then we'll just continue exploring this city. Do some looting, find the next POI that we're going to use for night two. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you're looking forward to this series. Thank you so much for watching and all the support. It really does mean a lot. You guys can follow me on Instagram or Twitter. It's at Glock9Gamer. I follow all gamers back. Stick around for more Horde every night, Ramblin' Man, and I will catch you guys in the next episode.